everybody i know it's been a long time since there has been a podcast for this particular one but i hope in the meantime you've been enjoying website as well as my new podcast not another true crime podcast which you can hear now there's a couple episodes out working on the third one and i'm going to try and keep this one going as well this is the foundation this is the one that i really want to keep going because as i mentioned before it's just discussion it's adult conversation it's a continuation of my website of social media posts things like that it's been months since i have done danny b speaks the podcast i mean 2020 has just been a bitch it's been a hell of a year it doesn't seem like it's letting up anytime soon i don't know what we did to 2020 obviously a lot and she was not pleased when she came in here so unfortunately these are the cards that we've been dealt so let's just go ahead and get into the show let you know what's been going on with me this year and what i have planned going forward so where have I been I've been here you know I mean I've been here I've been working pretty much that's it that's all I really can do I've been working from home since March now like what the second to last week of March I think my job we already work from home my particular department works from home three days a week so I'm used to working from home but every day for the past ooh, what almost approaching five and a half six months has been different it's been a challenge especially the position that I hold on my team it's really been difficult I just got worn out I'm not going to lie between just everything that's going on the world is changing the world is crazy we're approaching an election year so things are really getting just I'm just it's stressful it really is because I want things to change The Democratic presidential ticket, which I'll talk about in another episode, but it's not the one I was hoping for. But I am going to be voting for Biden and Kamala Harris. I should say Vice President Biden and Senator Kamala Harris. I definitely will be voting for them because we got to get that fool out of office and his crew and everything and bring these Republicans back down to planet Earth instead of in Trump's orbit or wherever they have been drinking the Kool-Aid from, ordering from for the past three and a half going on four years. Now, I will be the first to admit that I do a lot. I do too much. I try to do too much at once. I've always been like that. The way my mind works, my mom always has told me this since I was a kid, that my wheels are always turning. I always have a plan B, C, D, even before I have finished A or even if A doesn't work I'm already like thinking of other things to do and that's really what happened too is that I was trying to do too much I was trying to do too much at once I was like you know okay we're in this pandemic I'm gonna make the best of my time I'm really going to devote my time into this or I should say my brand and everything that I want to do. So that includes the website and the podcast and YouTube and um, what else? Um, Books. I still have some books that I'm working on. Yes, I said books multiple. That's because I can't do one thing at once. I can't focus on one thing at once. I seriously have issues. We're just going to put that out there. But I think that when the pandemic started and I knew I was going to be home a lot, 
I just I started thinking about all of these things that I can do. And I was like, Ooh, I'm gonna get back into doing my own music for my shows. And I'm going to start, um, compl- I'm gonna complete these designs that I've been working in, uh, working on so that I can finally get this merchandise out there. It was just too much. On top of trying to keep my website going on top of trying to keep the podcast going on top of trying to start the second podcast, it was it was just way too much. And then I have real bad anxiety. I've talked about it plenty of times before. If I get stressed out, or if I feel like I can't complete something, or I just get to the point where I'm not in a good place, then I just, I just not necessarily give up on everything. But it's like it just, it drains me, because I'm so frustrated that I couldn't get this done, or that I didn't do this. And then it's kind of like everything just falls by the wayside. It's a horrible habit. I don't recommend it to anyone. I mean, we all have our issues and things like that. And I have a lot of them, not gonna lie. It just became too much. I was trying to do too much. It just did not work out the way I wanted it to, the way I planned it to. This would have been the time, even still now, is the time for me to implement these things and get them going because I have been home more than I normally would. I'm already a homebody, but I do go out. You know, I do have a life. But with everything going on and I live with my grandmother and it's by choice before you tried to shade me, it is by choice you know I didn't want to expose her to a lot of things so I have been really trying to stay out unless I have somewhere I really need to be or whatever or something that I really need to do if I am going to be around other people I have to make sure that we're all protected and everything like that so I won't bring anything home to her because I mean we're all vulnerable to it but you know she's at an age of course where she's extra vulnerable to it and I know it's been a lot it's been draining on many of us that everything is just completely different and it does take you to a place where you're just like damn you know what what do you do that's the question what do you do I mean we are in it's a totally different world I mean just from going to the doctor just from going to the stores you just it's I mean you, you're going around you're seeing people in face masks everywhere you go yeah we're approaching the end of summer and everything like that and at the beginning well, mainly spring and at the very beginning of summer people weren't really out everything was getting canceled places were still closed I hadn't been going to the gym because their hours were crazy it was just like <sighs> I don't I mean it was um, everything my whole world was thrown off and I know a lot of us are or I should say has happened I know that's happened to a lot of people we've had to adjust we've had to change so many things it does take a toll on your psyche and how can I concentrate on these things when it, it seems like I should be able to I promise I would come in my office I would just sit here in front of the computer and do absolutely nothing. I I just I couldn't focus. I would just be watching Netflix or YouTube. I would be doing other stuff, cleaning my off. Just I mean, it was just so many things that I was doing and I wasn't doing what I said I was going to do. That's when I knew it was a problem. That's when I knew I had to step back and just be like, you know what? You got to come out here when you're ready. You got to get back out there when you're ready. Because if you just go out there and you just say anything just to have content out there, people are going to know. There's been so much that has happened this year besides Corona. There has been so much that has happened. There's so much that's still happening. There's been a lot to talk about, but I didn't want to talk about it. You know, I mean, it was, I just, I didn't, I didn't have the energy. Every, I was already drained. I was already just feeling like, ugh. And I knew I couldn't give you all a show and whoo, there have been some shit that has happened in this here year of 2020. Oh my goodness. But we'll get into a lot of that stuff later on on other podcasts. I just really wanted to give an update on what has been going on, but there is something that I do want to talk about, and I'm recording this podcast on Tuesday, September 1st. It was something that happened last night, which I know many of you either heard about or you saw, because everybody's been talking about it, but I do want to really give my take on the verses, which is one of the greatest things that has happened out of this pandemic, is these verses series on Instagram Live. But I do want to give my take on the Brandy Monica 
one that took place last night because, you know, that's my era. I'm the same age as them. So I have a lot to say. So finally, after all of these years, Brandy and Monica were in the same room again, and they did their version of, or I should say their episode of the Versus series that has been going on on um, Instagram Live, basically pretty much since the pandemic started, and there have been some really good ones. This one, I did it have the most views? I can't remember. I know like at the end of it, they even took an intermission, and nobody left it was like if anything more people came but I know like at the end it says something like 1.2 million and you know that's just an estimate so there were definitely more people in it I ended up watching it on Apple Music I usually I don't know if it's been on Apple Music before they did stream this one on Apple Music as well the only thing I don't really care about watching it on Instagram which I was so glad that I did one of my friends let me know that it was streaming on Apple Music so I did switch over to that clarity was so much clearer you got to see comments from real people like us on Instagram all you see are celebrities and it's most of these comics just trying to be funny and trying to get attention and that is so annoying oh my goodness I just I I can't I can't deal with that and can we just say and I posted this on my Instagram but if the mid to late 90s was a soundtrack Brandy and Monica would be a huge part of it these were they came out during my high school years and it was so refreshing remember the 90s and this was a time where there could be more than one person of a genre who was doing good who was doing the same music that you were doing and we all listened now it's not like that now it's like there can only be one female rapper there can only be well the male rappers I mean they all sound the same but that are out now I don't really see it too much with the men you know it's like they try to put all these female singers like Beyonce again Against Rihanna and neither one of them had ever paid that any debts. Rihanna hasn't released any music forever and she's on here clowning us all the time about her new album that she's not releasing. I don't know what's going on with that anymore but I'm just saying back then in the 90s and even in the 2000s definitely the early 2000s I mean we had so much to choose from even though you had someone like a Brandy, a Monica, a Mary J. Blige, Jada Jackson, Whitney Houston, I mean, you had all these female singers, you had music groups like Jodeci and Boys to Men. And, you know, I mean, you just you had all of these artists who did the same type of music, but we all listened to them. It didn't matter because you may have had your favorites, but you still listened and you didn't feel guilty about listening to an Aaliyah album and liking an Aaliyah album, even though you were more of a Brandy fan. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just a totally different time. And this really proved it when these artists are doing this on versus you look and they put together artists who are very similar in their music you see that we all listen to them it doesn't matter enough of my soapbox let's get back to the versus episode so what versus is for people who don't know they as I just mentioned they get two artists it could be producers singers rappers songwriters whoever but they get two artists who are very similar and have done similar music and were out at the same time doing the same thing and this was started by Timberland and Swiss Beats and I really didn't know how much um, Polo the Don had in this but I guess he's had a big hand in it I don't follow him so I didn't really know that he had I've seen him talk about it but I didn't know he really had that much of a part in the versus series so that's basically what what it is and the artists they go back and forth and they play just their hits they they've in, in the thing that's the key word is hits so you have to have I think they play like about 20 25 songs a piece so you have to have you have to be able to have at least 25 hits and if you know one artist plays their song and they like they'll give like a backstory about it if you're brandy you're going to give a moesha poem for it then the next artist the other artist who they're going against usually plays a song that was out around that same time like a good example last night you had brandy played i want to be down which was her first single and then monica turned around and played just one of them days which was her first single so you know what i mean so you're playing i mean it's a true battle and a lot of people crack me up how they get frustrated because these singers mainly don't sing their songs and the 
only two I remember singing were John Legend and Alicia Keys. And I didn't, I just flipped on that real quick and I saw both of them singing. I was definitely like, okay, you know, we're definitely not going to give this any airplay. I wasn't going to in the first place. But when once I heard them singing, I was like, nah, we're not going to do this. It's mainly just, you just play the song and you saw how like they would sing along or they would, when the song would cut off, because they only play a certain, maybe like a minute, minute and a half of the song. But when the song was over, they would start singing it live and you know just to be- basically let you know like yeah you know like like we we sang back then we sang down back then and like brandy said you know this was before auto tune so yeah um now let me give my take on brandy and monica a huge fan of both of them i've always loved both of their music i wasn't one of those people that pin pin uh, pitted pinned whatever trying to use big words that put one against the other I, I never did that because I liked both of them and I still like both of them they've done some albums in the past where I was or some songs where I was kind of like yeah you know okay it's, it's still Brandy and Monica so I'm, I'm here for it but yeah you know but that's what happens you're expecting to hear what you're used to from a lot of these artists that you grew up on but you had to realize that they have to change with the times too a little bit so I have to get over that I have to get over the fact that they're going to work with newer artists they're going to try to delve into a little bit of the newer sound and things like that so I'm growing I'm growing when it comes to that but this was the only verses I wanted to see between the two of them because I've never fed into that of course you know I'm from around that time so I heard about the rumors and everything like that I'm glad they shot a lot of those down because for a long time there were all these rumors that Monica slapped Brandy that they got in a fist fight or no that that Monica slapped Brandy before they went out to perform the boy is mine at the VMAs I mean there were just all these you know that they would just always be throwing shade at each other when they probably weren't even talking about each other you know they there has always been this thing between the both of them that the business and fans wanted to put them against each other because they know that they are so similar and that they have a lot of the same fans. So, many, you know, a lot of people were saying Brandy won. A lot of people were saying Monica won. I think everybody won. And I know that sounds corny and cliche, but we all won. We all won because we got to witness the greatness of these two. So that's how I feel. I never put them against each other. I've liked both of them. I have all their albums. I'm just continued to support. And I was so excited about this one to see. And it lived up to all the expectations. And, and of course, last night, people were trying to say that Monica was shading Brandy and Brandy was shading Monica. And let's just cut all that out right now. They are just two totally different people. They are complete polar opposites of each other. And they've always been like that. You have Brandy who's real like earthy and, you know, like a valley girl almost. She admits that, you know, she grew up in the valley and she... Um, even though she's originally from Mississippi, but they moved to Los Angeles when she was real young. So she's just very quirky. And you can tell she's a little, um, what do you say, goofy and awkward. And people were saying that she's like a true awkward black girl. Shout out to Issa Rae. And it's the truth. That's just who she is. That's who she's always been. She's always dressed differently. She just always has done her own thing. And Monica's the same way. Monica is more just like cutthroat. You're going to get the attitude. You're right off. You're going to know how she's feeling about it. You're, I mean, she's, it is what it is with Monica. That's just how she's always been she's more how do you astute maybe is that the word that I want to use but she's more like controlled in a sense where she says something and she's funny but it's just like you know it's not a big pomp and circumstance around her being shady or something like that it's just like she's a straight shooter and that's one of the things that a lot of people have loved about Monica as well just like they love Brandy's personality the thing is we don't know them but we grew up with them Monica made a good point she was like you've given like when Brandy when they were promoting their new work both of them are working they released their albums independently and Brandy was almost like well I don't really want to you know make it seem like I'm bragging about having my own label and all this other stuff and Monica was like girl you have given half of your life to this business uh 
Yeah, and actually more than half. Because what, Brandy's 41, and she started when she was, she said that she recorded her album when she was 14. I don't know how old she was when she did Thea. That was the first thing I remember seeing her in. Was she? So she was probably like 12 or 13 when she did Thea. But anyway, so yeah, she's given more than half of her life. And same with Monica. Yeah, you better let people know that... I built this, I own it, you better. The thing that really took me back last night was when Monica said that she recorded the Miss Thing album when she was only 12 years old. She was singing those songs, Just One of Them Days, Before You Walk Out of My Life, Like This, Like That. She was singing those songs at 12 years old. We're not going to discuss what I was doing at 12, and I don't have a bad voice, but I wasn't singing down like that. Okay, I mean, that really floored me. Even Brandy was like, wait a minute, 12? You did that when you were 12? I mean, now that was something very interesting to learn. And that took me back to, I think I talked about it on an episode I did where I discussed the Unsung with the Jets. And I know Unsung was a show that I followed, but I kind of haven't been watching it. I'm not going to lie. And then I hadn't been doing the podcast, but maybe we'll talk about some of those things too. But anyway, when they had the Jets the singing group the Jets from the 80s and early 90s when they had them on there but it was the Jets first release ballad you got it all and they said Elizabeth sang that song when she was only 12 years old I'm like what the hell it just makes you look back and think of what the hell I was doing at 12 years old and it damn sure wasn't anything that like that but Monica had that voice at 12 years old that's crazy but Anyway, Brandy said that she recorded her album when she was 14. And let's just talk about their voices real quick. Both of them still, not only do they look amazing, but they sound amazing. They're mothers, you know, they've had these long careers. They've been in the public eye for this long. They've had ups and downs in their lives. And we've seen it, but they still look amazing. Now, Monica has always had the stronger voice and she has such excellent just control of it. Monica is the example of a strong voice that is controlled. There are a lot of people who get out here and they have strong voices and all they sound like they're doing is yelling and people are like yes girl go off and it's just it's that becomes annoying after a while. I can listen to Monica sing all day because she's going to give you vocals for days. Now let's talk about the underratedness I don't know if that's a word, but it's going to be, you know how I am about making up my words. Brandy. Brandy has always had one of the greatest voices that I have ever heard. She has one of the best voices in the business. And she, when she said that she likes doing, she actually said love. She loves doing backgrounds more than she actually likes singing lead on her songs. I can totally see that. Brandy's vocal range is ridiculous. Now we always talk about the vocal Bible. Some people get a little offended because you leave out certain people who they feel is a good singer, but that's not necessarily what a vocal Bible is. I think I'm going to do a, not a podcast, but I think I'm going to do a blog post on the vocal Bible. It's not going to be a long one because it doesn't really take that long to explain, but there are only a few singers and I'm just going to go from, I'm just talking about I guess my generation that we grew up on, this could be back from like the 80s to, let's see, the 80s to, I'll give it back, eh, I'll give it about the 90s. So if you were real popular between that time, like Whitney Houston, I mean, she's named the voice for a reason because just, I can't even just go there on how much I have always loved Whitney Houston's voice. Luther Vandross is another one. Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, like it or not, Brandy is up there too because what Brandy can do with her voice, not many people can do that. It doesn't matter how great of a singer you are. Take someone like Tamar Braxton or Kiki Wyatt. I think that Tamar, we'll we'll go with Kiki because I love Tamar too. And I think Tamar has the best voice out of all the Braxtons. And you can fight me on that if you want to. Even Tony, no, Tony said Trina does. But I haven't really heard Trina sing down like that. Anyway, like an overall vocal range, I go with Tamar with the Braxtons. But, you know, Tony's Tony, but Tony has that lower, you know. But anyway, let's go with Kiki Wyatt. Kiki Wyatt is someone who I also would say is 
the vocal Bible because Kiki can do things with her voice in so many ranges, so many octaves that it's almost like it's out of this world. And that's how Brandy is. Now let's go back to Tamar real quick. Tamar can do things with her voice and she has such a strong voice, but I would put her in a category like with Tamia and Monica who have these strong voices and can sing down oh my goodness they can sing down but it's just like they just don't have that uh, you know I don't know what to call it and I'm really going to have to think about this I think I am going to do a blog post on it because it's something that I have always thought about but there is just certain people who just have it and Brandy is one of those people she can just think just her harmonies are out of this world just Oh, I, I, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm going to do a blog post on it, but just know that Brandy is up there with some of the greats. And I think that she has been overlooked just because she's younger than Mariah and Whitney and Luther. And of course, you know, you look at Mariah and Luther. I mean, I'm sorry, Whitney and Luther, because they're gone. So, of course, you're going to put them in a different um, tier, I guess we could say. But when it comes to people, singers, I should say, who have just the just oh I don't know I mean I'm just such a huge fan of music and I'm a fan of live music and live singing I love it I love hearing a great vocal and it could be growing up in the church it could be you know just but I love a great vocal a true vocal a real vocal honey that's I live for it. I'm here for it. Listen to a Brandy album. I would say from her second album, Never Say Never, until B7, her current album that is out, which is amazing, by the way. Listen to those albums and listen to the background on them. The majority of the background singing is Brandy, and you wouldn't know it. You would if you studied her music and her voice, but it's so different and it's so controlled. If you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know it was Brandy. That's what I'm saying. All right, so let's finish it out with talking about what is going on with the brand and all that other stuff. So, of course, I still have my website, dannybspeaks.com. That is the mecca. That is where everything goes down. The website won't be going anywhere. That's where I started. I love to write. That is basically where I can put everything else that I'm working on or that I've done on there. So that will always be there unless I just decide to give everything up. But, you know. That's a whole nother thing. Danny B Speaks the Podcast, which is what you are listening to now, will still be going. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a weekly show. And I spoke about this before. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a weekly show. I know there will be some like shorts that I'm going to do, which means like I may come in and just talk about something for like 15, 20 minutes instead of the normal 45 minutes, sometimes an hour podcast that I have been known to do in the past or which I have done. That's a possibility that I will be doing that. Not sure if the podcast is going to be, be released weekly or or bi-weekly we'll see so don't look for a specific day for the podcast to be dropped just subscribe and look out for it I also have another podcast that I started hopefully some of you have seen it and hopefully you've listened to it if you're into true crime but it's Danny B Speaks presents not another true crime podcast this just takes on different cases that I've been following that I wanted to do some more research on and look into get other people's opinions on what they thought about them, whatever. And it's not just going to focus on murders because there's other types of crime. I even plan on, I have a, um, a inkling that I may do something a little personal on there that possibly happened to me. We'll see. But I want to get that up and going. So far, it's two episodes, which are both Tim Norman and Tim Norman Part 2. I think that's what it's called. And that this one is giving updates and details on the new and ongoing case of James Timothy Norman, who is the son of Robbie Montgomery of Sweetie Pie's fame, the restaurant Sweetie Pie's, I should say, and the television show from the own network, Welcome to Sweetie Pie's. And he has been accused of facilitating the murder of his own nephew, Andre Montgomery. So we'll just talk about what kind of trash he and his co-conspirators are over there. There's going to be other shows as well. I'm going to try to cover things that may not necessarily be be something that you would see on a normal true crime show and then a lot of them yeah 
there because there are things that are very popular cases that I have seen documentaries on and read about and all these other things. So, yeah, it's going to is I'm really excited about this one because, as I mentioned plenty of times before, and I mentioned the intro of the first Not Another True Crime podcast, I have a ridiculous obsession with true crime. And it's mainly like I mainly really got into it as a kid even I think what was it Unsolved Mysteries was probably like the first show that I really I got into with this topic genre whatever you want to call it and regardless how much Robert Stack's voice scared me regardless of how much that intro music terrified me the cases terrified me I still watched it you know, then I got in like First 48 and all these other shows that just followed, even television shows like Law and Order and Law and Order SVU that took on true crime, real true crime um, cases and brought them back to life and things, other things like that. Of course, I faithfully watch the ID channel. I'm just, I, it just, it is what it is. I love true crime and I hate, I hate saying that because it's doesn't sound right saying that you love true crime. So I just thought this would be fun. It's an oversaturated field with podcasts. Trust me, I know because I listen to a lot of them. I just wanted to put my take on it. You know, it's something that I always wanted to do. So we'll see how that works out. YouTube channel. I plan on posting more. I, right now I have all my podcasts on YouTube. Hopefully the older ones will still play because I did change podcast host. So hopefully they still they still play. I'm had to go on there one day and see. And if not, then I'll have to re-upload them. YouTube channel is growing. I mean, I still don't have a lot of subscribers, but I got a lot of views. So that's helping. And I want to do more on there, like more videos and um, story times and things like that. So that's something that I it's in the foreseeable future, but it's not something that I'm really working on right now, but it's something to get into. I have a few books that I have ideas on. One I've actually really started getting into and writing. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I can't really focus on one thing at a time. And I'm learning to do that, to try to focus on one thing at a time so I can at least get this book done and then worry about all the other stuff like getting it published and the editor and all those things like that later. So I'm really trying to focus on one thing. Also has some poetry that I've been working on that I want to get published as well. Every now and then you may see a short story or a snippet of poetry on my website. So look out for that. And lastly, the merch, the merchandise that I want to sell is pretty much whatever but it's another oversaturated field everyone has t-shirt line everyone had you know it's not hard to do this is something that I really had been looking to get into for quite a few years but like everything else I would start designing because I love to design I would start designing stuff and then I would just like throw it by the wayside I just like wouldn't even look back on it for a while so I over the past maybe four or five months, I would say I really got back into designing and working more on my designs. And these designs have a purpose. I'm sure everyone can say that about their clothing line or their merchandise line that they have. But what I mean by that is it basically intertwines with things that go on like my website and the podcast and um, series that I'm working on things like that. So they have that's what I'm saying they have a meaning like if I put out this t shirt, it has something to do with something else that I'm doing, you know, so that's basically what the merch is. So I'm gonna try that out as well. See how that goes. I told you I'm trying to do too much. I'm trying to do too much, but it, hey, it is what it is. I'm trying to be able to one day not have to clock in and just be able to work for myself. I've always said it. I could seriously write all day. I could write all day. I could talk. I could do the podcast. I would love to do that. That's my dream. But the reality of the fact is I'm no spring chicken. I got bills. I have a lifestyle that I like to sustain and not bringing in nearly enough money to even come close <laughs> to what I make right now on my nine to five. So 
there's that. But be on the lookout for all that stuff. So thank you once again for listening to the mess of it all. I, you know how we do on here. It is what it is. This I didn't have any notes or anything with this podcast. I kind of knew what I wanted to talk about. The Brandy and Monica thing just came to me. I mean, I didn't even think that I was going to get into it like I did, but kind of glad I did. Gave my opinion on the verses from last night. So as always, you can check me out on my website, dannybspeaks.com. If you have any comments, questions, if you would like to be a sponsor, if you would like for me to sponsor you, you can send me an email at dannybspeaks at gmail.com. You can listen to this podcast as well as Not Another True Crime Podcast on Apple Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and of course, dannybspeaks.com. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and I will check you all out on the next podcast. Peace.